All right. Um, we've done our tarot uh, pre-integration. You guys got uh, great cards. And so I have a prayer I'm going to begin with and a poem that's an adapted for this. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. It may not look like it, but these women are taking part in a religious ceremony. They're members of the Divine Assembly, a new church whose followers say they commune directly with the divine. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Okay, with that... Like other churches, this one has a sacrament, but it's not bread or wine. We all have had various forms of mushrooms, but in this one, uh, I grind up the mushroom. And this is uh, a strain called B+, which I had my best trip ever. Where does it come from, the shrooms? I'd rather not say. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone in the ceremony wanted their face shown. Cheers, Cheers lady. <laughs> <clears throat> tart. Yeah, it is. It's that's, all. that's tart. All right, my friends, let's get this going. Let's go upstairs. Would you feel comfortable over there? <laughs> Psychedelic guides like Marcy Collette okay. usually hold these ceremonies in private homes. Do you want to get under the covers or just maybe under this blanket? You feeling good about your intentions? And Okay. The church has no rules on how to do it right. Groups can be rowdy and musical or quiet, like a chapel. When you come out of your quiet time, we can also open up the windows. Yeah. This one is basically a spiritual spa day. What are some of the signs that you look for where you can tell that they're starting to feel the drug? Um, a nice, like, serene look on their face, mainly, but nice. Breath. Uh, particularly for this group, there's such a chatting group, so when they're quiet, that means they're, they're going to something. Yeah. Have you seen anything move? Or? Yeah, just kind of um, finding comfort wherever my eyes land. Okay. Across the country, there are a growing number of spiritual groups who worship using psychedelics, like magic mushrooms, ayahuasca, peyote, and bufo, which is psychoactive toad venom. They all argue that the use of otherwise illegal drugs is protected under freedom of religion. But the line between religion and drug use under the cover of religion isn't always clear. In 2020, a self-proclaimed church in Oakland that was distributing mushrooms as part of its practice was raided by police. Security footage captured officers confiscating their drugs. The group is now suing the city. The Divine Assembly says it has more than 5,000 members. Many of them are former Mormons who now spend their Sundays at services like this one in the basement of a swingers club. Hey, how's everyone doing? All right, good. We have one tenet, which is each of us can commune with the divine and receive direct guidance. That's enough, right? If you can receive Steve Urquhart and his wife, Sarah, founded the Divine Assembly three years ago. It's quite a departure from his previous career as a Republican state senator. Okay, Groovy, I'm getting off the stage. Thank you. Why are mushrooms central to this church? Well, I left religion, organized religion, thinking to hell with it all. You know, it's, it's, uh, I've been fooled once. There is no God, there's nothing. And then psychedelics reintroduce the concept that there might be something else out there. So you were already having these spiritual mushroom ceremonies when you decided to start the church. Correct. In a ceremony, I just had a profoundly powerful experience where I saw my kids as, as they really are, right? I'm just seeing how beautiful and glorious they are. You know, I just was electric. I was on fire and I was just sobbing that they are so beautiful and how is that not religion? Wow. 
dozens of people show up for Sunday services. There are no sermons and no discussion of beliefs, and no one takes drugs. Instead, members break off into groups to share experiences about their trips and take lessons in what they call shroomiversity. You'll take just about a tablespoon from the colonized jar, and you'll put that into a new sterilized grain jar, and then it'll colonize from there. There's also a therapeutic ice bath and a meditation room with music and flashing lights. After leaving Mormonism and the constraints that were there, um, I didn't know what I was. I didn't know who I was. And so over the last three and a half years with therapy and psychedelics, it has brought me back to myself and who I am. Do you worship mushrooms? No, no, it's more of a tool, much like therapy is a tool, much like um, yoga, meditation, music can be a tool for people. And it's something that is sacred to us. We don't use it lightly and we don't take anything that we learn from it lightly either. But having your life changed by mushrooms doesn't necessarily mean you're part of a religion, at least as far as the law is concerned. Right, that's the end of our journey with deep breaths. <sighs> Allison Hoot specializes in the legality of psychedelic churches. One of the main characteristics of these churches over the last few decades, especially in the United States, is that they remain underground. They mostly are, to be frank, illegal. So what makes a psychedelic church legally defensible? So for a church to be legally defensible under the law, the church has to have an articulatable religious belief set. They need to show that they're sincere, and they need to show that they have minimized the risk to participants the harm to their health and safety. And they've also minimized the risk of diversion, which is that these substances would be used in a way that is non-religious. So if you are a member of these churches and you're really in it for the healing that comes from psychedelics, is that sincere in the eyes of the government? I think that to separate spirituality and healing can be really problematic. While I understand you know, the government wants to divide it into these two categories so they can analyze it. In reality and in practice, there is a significant and crucial overlap between medical and spiritual practice. How are y'all doing? Good, how are you? Good. Feeling good? Definitely feeling it. Or we haven't like lost our brain cells or anything, but everything's just a little bit um, more. You remember your trauma and you know it's there and it's still hard, but it gives you the fluid fluidity to move past it. So is this religious for you? Because it sounds like what you're talking about is much more about mental health and healing as opposed to religion. I'm not a religious person and not even spiritual, not even a little bit, but um, mental health aspect. Yeah. I feel like mushrooms can also make you think differently. I see it as a social club for people to meet, network, share beliefs, discuss trauma, ideas, books, um, technology, all of it. Mm -hmm. If mushrooms were legal here, would you be a member of this church or any church? No, absolutely not. Do you think there are members of the church who are joining it as a loophole to get around drug laws? Of course. And does that bother you? I don't know. I mean, I think that they're on their path. You know, I think a lot of people would look at what we do, and say, this is bullshit. These people are just, you know, using the idea of religion to get around drug laws. And, you know, I don't, I don't really care what they think, but for sincere people, I wish they could see inside my mind, inside my heart, and just see the changes that have happened and are happening, and just see how I'm seeing the divine on a daily, hour-by-hour -hour basis in the people I'm interacting with. I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts. 
not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.